Hello guys and welcome to part one of our XBMC walkthrough. We're going to be looking at this in three steps. In step one we're going to be looking at downloading XBMC for Windows. In step two we'll be installing XBMC for Windows. And in step three we'll be running and configuring XBMC. So the first thing we need to do guys is open up our web browser. and then navigate to xbmc.org. Once there, we need to highlight the download section and then click on Get XBMC. And then once there, click on the Windows part of the screen. And this will take us to SourceForge and to the download for the exe file for XBMC. Save that to your hard disk. And then once that's saved, we can look at installing XBMC. Okay guys, so now that we've downloaded that file, we can just run that from our desktop. Click next on the first page. And then we've got the license agreement. You can read through it if you wish. There's nothing really of any relevance in there. Just basically saying this is for home use only. Click I agree. We're gonna do a full installation as per the default settings and we're going to install to the default file location as well. We're also going to store the user data in the default location and we're going to have the start menu in the same location as well. Now I've sped this up um, just for ease of use. It will take a few minutes in reality but I've just sped the video up here and we're finished. XPMC is now installed on our computer. Okay guys, so now we've got XBMC open and you can see the, um, the main display here uh, including we've got the, uh, at the top we've got the weather, we've got the date and the time and at the bottom we've got a, an RSS feed um, which you can change which uh, RSS feeds go into there by default it's got the XBMC feed in there. Over on the left side of the screen we've got three buttons here one which will play an optical disc that's in the drive Another will open up our favourites, and the last allows us to exit XPMC, shut down the computer, suspend the computer, or reboot it. I'm going to switch to using the uh, keyboard now, as you can see I'm using the mouse here. Um, using the keyboard is just a bit more intuitive once you get used to it. Uh, mostly use the arrow keys, uh, escape, enter, and space. Um, so I'll just demonstrate here. With the arrow keys I can navigate up and down these menu items. So we have uh, the system menu which contains the settings, file manager, profiles and system info. Uh, we have a programs menu which we'll look at later. Uh, the music menu, the videos menu, pictures, weather and scripts. Uh, we'll look at scripts in our second XBMC video. Uh, so for now let's dive straight into the weather. And from here you can see I've got this set up for uh, my hometown, Northampton. Um, demonstrates the weather conditions at the moment and a four day forecast. Uh, you actually have three presets for locations. So I've also got Swindon set up there. And I've got Budapest in Hungary set up. And uh, you also have a button here for refreshing the weather data. Uh, although it does tend to change dynamically anyway. Uh, and in the settings for this, it jumps to the weather page in the settings menu uh, and you can edit the locations and uh, the weather plugin from here. Next let's go down to pictures, uh, just give you a basic idea, there's no pictures actually in this library um, but just so you can see what the interface looks like. Uh, videos is where most people will spend their time. Um, as you can see there's, uh, there's a, a couple of options for plugins and playlists but there's no actual movies in our library at the moment. So let's go to the Add Source button and I can show you how to add movies to your library. Uh, as you can see there's a highlighted field which is the path to where our, uh, our files are. We can move across to the Browse button and it will bring up a whole bunch of options for us. The desktop for this computer, the home folder, uh, any UPnP servers that you've got on your network, uh, a USB disk that's, that's connected, some video plugins, uh, and where I'm going to look, I've got all my media stored on another PC on my network, so if we look here, select the appropriate locations, 
So here's all my media that I've got stored on my computer. Um, I'm going to add the TV shows folder just to demonstrate how this works. As you can see, I've got a fair few different TV shows. Each of these folder contains a number of episodes. So we'll select OK. And as you can see, the, uh, the network path has been automatically put into the field. Uh, it suggested the name TV shows based upon the folder name, which is absolutely fine. Uh, and here's where it gets interesting, because we can set what type of content is in these folders. Uh, now we know this folder contains TV shows, and this allows us to choose on this page um, from music videos, TV shows, or movies. So we know it's TV shows, and we have different TV show databases. Databases. We have the tvdb.com, we have tvrage, tv.com, and IMDB TV. Now I always use the tvdb.com for TV shows. It seems to have uh, the best information for all the TV shows that I'm using at the moment. Uh, so we'll move down and we'll select Run Automated Scan, which will, as soon as we click OK, it will go and scan all the items in our library and it will uh, go and pull down thumbnails, uh, fan art, uh, actor listings, episode listings for all the, all the episodes of all the TV shows that are in that folder. So we'll click on OK there and OK that. And now you can see at the top of the screen it's gone off to download the TV show information. It's already established that the folder called Coupling contains the TV show coupling, and it's now downloading the um, episode listings for each of those shows. Um, so that can take quite a long time, depending on how big your library is. I've got quite a big library. It's going to take a couple of hours to do this. So we're going to leave it there, and we'll come back in a minute when it's finished, and we'll go from there. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than expected, but after a few hours, uh, all our video information has been downloaded. So, let's just have a look at what we've got. Okay, so you can see in this view here, we have thumbnails of all of our TV shows, and you'll notice the background image is changing to fan art relating to that TV show as we scroll through. Just to show you, there's lots of different views we can have. We have a list view. We have the big list. We have a thumbnail view, which doesn't look too great with these wide thumbnails that we've got. Again, with the poster wrap, it doesn't really work that well. So wide views is really the best view we're gonna get here. Clicking on each one of these in turn will give, give you the folders. I.e. for here, we have one folder for each series. Or if it's just files underneath, then you just get thumbnails for all the files. So not the best view there, but what we can do is back at the main video menu, we can switch to library mode. And then what that'll do is when we go to the TV shows folder, it gives us a lot nicer presentation, gives us a lot more information relating to each and every of the series. And then when you click on each series, you get episode information when it was first aired, a bio for each uh, episode, and a thumbnail for each episode as well. So that's a nicer view. That's the video part. The music part, very similar again. It just gives you the option to add a source. It gives you any music that's already in your library. And similarly, it will give you um, album information, artist information, uh, and any other metadata that's already included in the MP3 files. So we'll leave it there for now. In uh, part two of our XBMC walkthrough, we're going to be looking at the scripts menu. We'll look in more depth at the programs menu and the system menu as well. And we'll show you some of the cool things you can do with XBMC, um, such as uh, replacement skins for this default skin that we have, uh, extra plugins, which gives us extra functionality with online content and things like that. And we'll be looking at some scripts as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, stay tuned and part two will be with us as soon as possible. Uh, if you've got any questions or concerns, as always, send us an email, leave us a comment, speak to us on Facebook. Um, we've got plenty of ways for you to contact us, so feel free.